I'm going to show you how to create the book cover for your first no content book. So in the last video, if you haven't seen it, you can click here and go watch it. I created an interior for your no content book. And specifically, I choose this black composition notebook with 150 pages. Now that we have the interior made, we have to take care of the cover design. In the description, you can find the time codes. The first step is going to go on amazon.com and study your own competition because as we did it for the interior uh, we have to know what other self-publishers are doing and most importantly what customers are looking for in this particular niche the niche is simply the kind of book that we are creating in our case it is a composition notebook it's quite large because it's 8.5 inches per 11 inches and as you can see here it can be used for school university work or daily life so we have to understand what is the average customer looking for in a book like this I I usually go on, on amazon.com type in the search bar my keyword in my case was composition notebook college ruled and then take a look at all the results of the first page now the first the results are not from kdp publishers and you can understand this because these books come in bundles and we cannot do that so what i suggest you as a beginner is to look for what other kdp self-publishers are doing this book is a composition notebook on the cover it has a pattern with strawberries and red vertical stripes that goes along the left side of the page and on the top half part of the book you can see a white label with the text composition notebook and two lines that will allow the customer to write his or her information you can see that by scrolling down this layout repeats itself for example this one is a marble composition notebook college ruled so the same white label the same stripe a pattern on the background and then there is this one which has a more abstract background on the front cover but the same elements are there this one has flowers this one has cats now that we know what publishers are doing and what the customers expect to find on the cover of this book we can take inspirations from this book and start designing our cover the next step is to go on this KDP website and download your template Then we will use to design our cover in a correct way. Now we enter this book information, click on binding type and select paperback. Interior type is black and white. Paper type is white paper. Page turner direction is left to right. Measurement units is going to be inches and the trim size was 8.5 per 11 inches. Now the page count, if you saw the last video in which I created the interior for this book was 120 pages. Then you want to click on calculate dimensions and download your template. Once you have downloaded this folder, double click on it to open it, you're going to find three files. The first one is the template in a PDF format. The second one is the same template, but in a PNG format, so it's an image. And the third file is a text file with the instructions that might be useful for beginners. Now, before uploading this on Canva and start designing, I want to explain you how to use it. So this template gives us basically an idea of what our cover file is going to be like. We have a front cover on the right side, the back cover on the left side, and we have the spine, which is this vertical line on the center. Also, we have white areas and red areas. The white areas are the one in which you can put anything you want, like text, graphics, or logos. The red areas is where you shouldn't be putting anything that you want to be displayed in the final product, because during the printing process, it might end up being cut. Also, we have a yellow rectangle and that's where the barcode is going to be positioned. We have to make sure we don't put anything important. Do not position text there because basically will be hided by this barcode and during the uploading process, KDP will reject your book. This happened to me, so I know this by first hand. Also, you see a black solid line that is running along the borders of this file. That is where the book cover is going to be cut during the printing process. So all the red area beyond this black black solid line will be lost during the printing process and that is called bleed. Bleed basically is just extra inches on the height 
and on the width of the book cover and also on the interior files sometimes that you actually see while you're designing your cover but will end up being cut during the printing process. Don't put anything essential there. Now that we know how to properly use a cover template we have to jump on our design software. You can use whatever you want for example I usually use Adobe Illustrator for a more complex projects but you can use also Affinity Design or in this case we're going to use Canva because it's user-friendly, it's perfect especially for beginners and people who are not really familiar with designing. If you don't have an account yet just click here on the top right corner sign up and then you can create your own account. Once you're signed up click on this button create a design on the top right corner of the page. Click on custom size. Now we have to figure out what dimensions we need to create our cover. The first thing you need to do is to switch from pixels to inches. If you don't do that, even if you put the right dimensions, you're going to end up with the wrong file. So please make sure to switch from pixels to inches. Once you have done that, go back to your template and here you can see the overall dimensions for the width is 17 inches 0.52 and for the height is 11.25 inches. So let's go back on Canva and in the width I write 17.52 and in the height 11.25. Now, if you're wondering, these dimensions already include bleed because every cover file needs bleed, while interior files, sometimes they do need bleed and sometimes they don't. Once you have done this, click on create new design. So at the center of the page, you have the space where you should be designing. Here on the top, you have different elements you can click on. And on the left side, you have a column where you can pick elements or upload different graphics from your computer into Canva. Now, the first thing you want to do is to grab the template you just downloaded from the KDP page and drag it on this Canva. And to be specific, you need the PNG file version of the template not the PDF. So you can either click here on upload media and then browse in your computer and select the file or you can simply drag and drop the file on here. Once you have uploaded it, the PNG file will show in this section here in the images. You can click on it, position it on one of its corners. You can see that when the file is touching the edge of the cover, it just clicks into place. So it's very easy to use. And then you can drag it by one of these corners and fill all the area with your template. In this way, now we know where we can design and what areas we have to avoid. Once again, this is going to be the front cover. This is going to be the spine and this is the back cover. The next thing is to create a background. So go on elements and click on lines and shape and go for a simple square. Click on it. As you did for the cover template, you simply put it here on one of its corners and drag the size down and on the side in order to fill all the area with your background. Now you can change the background to whatever color you want. While you have selected this rectangle, click on this button here which is color and then you can either select one of these colors or you can add a new color by clicking on this plus button. So with this cursor you can change the saturation so you can go from gray to black to red and with this cursor here you change the hue of the colors so from orange to yellow to green and so on for now let's just put it to black now what you want to do is to bring down the transparency of this background in order to see the template that's underneath it so you click on the background you click on this transparency icon and you drag down the cursor to maybe 60. now it is time to decide what are we going to put on the cover to gather some ideas i usually go on amazon.com write the main keyword on my search bar and then see what the competition is doing or i go on etsy or Pinterest, which are platforms with a lot of designs ideas. But another way to find ideas for niches and sub-niches is to go on Creative Fabrica, which is a website in which you can find lots of fonts, lots of graphics, interiors, template for your KDP box. And from all these bundles, you can get an idea. For example, a Mother's Day bundle, retro bundle, camp life bundle, winter illustration clip art, 
safari animals in touch creepy halloween so there are lots and lots of ideas you can take from creative fabrica and that's where i get my inspiration sometimes at this point you have decided what is going to be on the cover what is the theme the style the next thing is to choose graphics to put on the cover the font and figure out the general layout now if you want to get elements from canva you can click on this section here elements click on this search bar and maybe type flowers and and you get all these resources and just by clicking on them for example this flower here i drag it down and you can position it wherever you want on the cover now if you have a free account in canva you can use all the graphics except for the pro ones and when you see this crown here with the text pro it means that this graphic is only available to pro users also canva has this content license agreement here if you scroll down you see the basics and the free content licenses I I suggest you to go through this content before publishing your book on Canva so you are fully aware of what are the terms that you need to follow in order to avoid future problems with intellectual property rights or copyright and so on. Now I decided that I want to make a 90s themed notebook so a sort of nostalgic 90s vintage vibe and I got this idea from Creative Fabrica so you can either go on Creative Fabrica and get the bundle or you simply go on Canva click on elements and here in the search bar you can write something like nostalgic 90s and here you have all this library of graphics you can choose from and what i usually do when i find a style of illustration that i particularly like i hover over it with the mouse i click on this three dots icon and then click on see more like this and now I have a set of, of illustrations that look like the same because probably they were designed by the same designer. And so I can have a cohesive style on my cover. Now I want to drag some of these on the front cover. So I simply click on them. And now I simply position them on my page and figure out what is the general layout of this page. Now you can either position all these elements inside the white area, but you can also position them above the red area as long as they go through it completely. So for example, this compact disc stays inside the white area, but it stretches to the end of the cover. In this case, you can do that. But this floppy disc, you cannot position it on the white area and a little portion of it on the red area this is wrong this is going to be rejected by kdp so make sure it all stays inside the white area or it goes completely through the red area like this if you want you can rotate them by clicking on this icon and change the inclination of the objects and i'm going to bring back the background once again and at this point i want to take care of the text now when we're designing our cover we already have to know what title this book is going to have because whatever is going to be the title we need to have displayed it in on the front cover or in the spine now the next thing you want to do is to add that white label that we saw in the other box we can go on elements and here we can write label and maybe in the results we can find something interesting like this or you can simply pick a shape in these elements and go for lines and shapes and look for something similar in this section so in my case I really like this white shape I try to position it at the center and then I want to put the word composition notebook on it in order to create a text you can either go here on the text section and select a heading a subheading or a body text or go for these combinations of font that canva is already displaying to you some of them are for pro users some of them are free what I usually do is click on T on my keyboard and this paragraph test will appear now I go for composition notebook if I want to change the color, I simply select the text, click on this text color and go for black and then I position it on top of the label. Then I want to make it bold. So I click here and if you want to change the font, click on here, open sans light and scroll down to see which font you like the best. And I click on this TT Milk's casual 901 fonts. I think it's really cool and it matches with the general vibe we're going for. Now I want to decrease the space between these two lines. So I click on the text, click on here spacing, decrease the line spacing. Then in order to create the lines, you have to go on elements on these lines and shape section. You you click on the line you can drag it down by one of his hands and you can change the color right here 
so I'm going to switch it to black. You can decrease or increase the thickness of the line, so I'm going to decrease it to 2. Then I want to drag it on the white label. Now I want to create two or three lines, so in order to duplicate an, an element in Canva, you click on it and then you click on this button duplicate like this, or I use a shortcut on my keyboard, so if you're working on a Windows, you have to click on Shift and Alt and then drag your element down. If you're working on a Mac, while you're dragging the element, you keep pressed the Shift and Option keys. Now I'm going to repeat this for three times. If I want to space them evenly, I have to select all three lines, go on position and space evenly vertically. And all the lines now have the same space between one another. Now I'm going to set the transparency to 100 because I actually want to change this color background. So I'm clicking on color and I'm moving the cursor till I found something that I like. Maybe something purple is going to be a little bit more appealing to 90s kids. Once you have all the elements on the page, what I usually do is to make sure everything is centered on the front cover. This is really important. You want your cover to be aesthetically nice to look at. So I decrease the transparency of my my color background down to 50 so I can see clearly the template behind it. Then I go on elements, I click on the lines and shape section and go for the square border shape. Click on it. I'm going to change the color for you so you can see it clearly. And now you want to decrease the thickness of the line so you drag it down by one of its corners. Then you move it on top of these dotted lines and this solid line right here. Then you want to drag these square borders along these lines like this. Now why did I do this? This yellow border represent the actual dimensions of our final front cover because as I said before this part right here on the left side is going to be cut out it's the bleed part and the other side belongs to the spine you want everything to be aligned to these borders so in order to do that you have to click on this yellow border and put it underneath all these elements right here on the front cover so you click on it position and click backwards as many times as it take to position it behind the white label on your front cover but make sure that it stays on top of the background and the template because you still need to be able to click on it. Now, once you have done that, you want to select everything that's on the page that you want to be centered. This text, the three lines, the white label, these yellow borders, click on position and click on center. Now that these elements are centered, I can delete the yellow border, bring up the transparency of our background up to 100. So I won't be able to see the template and that is is really important. Make sure that you either delete the template by clicking on it and then clicking on this trash icon or make it invisible by clicking on it and lower the transparency of that element. Or a third option is to simply put something on it like I did with the background. I make the background totally visible so what's underneath it won't be displayed on the cover. Now I think I want to add something more to it like a pattern. I go on elements and I write color pattern. Maybe I can add the word 90s. Now I find this one which I really like. On the top you can change the color of each element right here. So if I want to switch it from yellow to orange I can. In my case I want these colors to match the color of the illustrations that I've already chosen. So I click on this orange, click on plus, click on this icon, click on the area from which you want to pick a color, in my case is the yellow. I want to change also the pink, so do the same, plus pick a color, position it on the pink, it's going to change. Also I want to change this light blue, so plus pick a color, and there you go. Also I want to eliminate all these little horizontal lines because I think they create too much mess, so I select one of these dark colors and then I click on the purple color that I have on the design because in this way it will basically disappear. At this point position it on the top right corner of your cover and then put it backwards so all the elements stays on top of it. 
once you're on top of it, you basically check the results from here, maybe make it a little bit smaller like this. And now you want to duplicate it. So you basically drag it by the side until you see these pink lines become light blue. It means they're touching. So they're next to each other. And maybe you want to flip it to see if the patterns works best. And then you keep doing this as many times as you need. You select everything and duplicate it. And now if you want to repeat the same action to go faster, do not touch anything and click on your keyboard Command D if you're on a Mac or Control D if you're on a Windows. So Control D, Control D another time and you will have a perfectly aligned pattern on your background. Now you can select all this stuff and group it because in case you want to move it around, it will be much easier as a grouped element. Click on every square you positioned, click on group, and now you position this behind all the illustrations. And there you have your cover design. If you don't like this pattern, you simply click on it, click on Command X if you're on a Mac or Control X if you're on a window and you delete it and you see which one do you prefer. Now it's time to download our cover. So you need to click on share, download. Since this is a cover for a paperback, we have to switch the file from PNG to PDF print, leave the crop marks and bleed option unchecked and then click on download. And this is the final result we achieved. But don't leave the video yet because I have another tip. Sometimes you have multiple covers on each file on Canva. Like for example, I create another page by clicking on this and I create another notebook. So I choose black background, I select this element right here copy them and paste them on here. And then I have a second notebook. Maybe if I create another one, change the background color to light blue and I have a third one. Now, what if you want to download all these covers? You go on share, click on download, switch to PDF print. You see that we have all page selected. If you leave all these pages selected and then you click on download, you basically will download a PDF file with three different pages, one for each cover you designed. And if if you upload this cover to KDP, KDP will reject it because each cover has to be made of just one page. So what you want to do is either select one page at a time, go for page one, and then when you've downloaded it, you go back on Canva and switch from page one to page two and repeat the same action. But it takes a lot of time. Imagine you have 10 different covers. What I suggest you is to select all pages, download the file with multiple pages in it, and then go on I love PDF, which is a tool that I showed you in this video. If you want to know more about it, click on split PDF. Then you please select the PDF file from your computer by clicking here. Now this PDF file has three pages. We want to split them into three different PDFs, each one with one page. We click on split by range. Then we go on fixed ranges and we leave the number on this field set to one. Now we click on split, download split PDF. And once you open this folder, you will find three different PDFs, each one of them with the cover that you designed. So this is the purple one, this is the black one, and this is the light blue one. So this was an extra tip for creating multiple pages and do not waste time on exporting them one at a time. Now, the next thing will be to write a title, subtitle, author name, create a description. I'll create a video about that too. When it will be ready, you will find it by clicking here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, please put a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments if you liked the cover that I created and what are the most difficult things you find in creating a design if you already tried and see you in the next video.